All right, so here we are. We're looking at content standard one. It's the first assessment of the year. And, you know, we're planning a scientific investigation. There's specific things I want you to be able to list that should be part of it. And then you're actually going to do the design. So these are the 10 things I'm looking for when I assess. These are the things I want you to list. What is the question? What is the hypothesis? What are the variables? And then when you actually write out your step-by-step -step procedure, these are the specific things I'm looking for in your steps. A finished product might look something like this. Here are the things that you have listed. And then your procedure, it's in steps. But within those steps, I should hear about the experimental setup, a control if possible. Um, I want to hear about how you're going to measure and record your data, what your plan is to, with the data, and then how you, you could verify your results. First thing I want to start talking about real quickly here is understanding variables. We have independent and dependent variables. I like to call the controlled variables constants simply because I want to try and make a distinction here and not confuse you about the difference between controlled variables and a control group. So I think the control group thing is a little bit new as far as um, freshman science is concerned. But let's start here with the dependent variable. It's basically the results of the experiment. We are going to try and manipulate or change something in the experiment to give us results. There are many things, though, that probably could affect those results. We want to manipulate only one thing at a time in a nice controlled experiment and then keep all of those other things constant or the same in all of the trials. Now, as far as things to list here, first thing I want to do is list. In our scientific question, the easiest way to make sure you start right is to frame your question in this manner. When you frame your question like this, the variables are embedded directly into the question and it just gets everything rolling in a nice direction. So here, does I affect D? If I set up the, this example, does room temperature affect sweating? The thing that will be manipulated would be the room temperature and sweating will respond to that. So these are the results. We're going to measure sweating in response to a change in room temperature. When we write our hypothesis in high school, we're going to work on a working hypothesis, and it's going to be an if-then will result in form. And this is the basic format that we're going to follow here. If there's a connection between two variables, and then the because part is a little bit of the scientific background if we know it. Then if I increase or decrease the independent variable, what is going to be the response? And I want a specific prediction. So just don't say manipulating room temperature will result in a change in sweating. I want to know, is it a direct relationship? If I increase the room temperature, will I also increase sweating, if I decrease and decrease, is it inverse? So if one thing goes up, is the other thing going to go down? And is there any point in the relationship where we might hit a cutoff? So again, following our example here, if there's a connection between room temperature and sweating because the body perspires to lower body temperature, then increasing room temperature will result in an increase in sweating. Listing our variables and we just want to list these. I want to know that you know very specifically the difference between the variables and thinking, you know, a little bit about what are the other things in the experiment that have to stay the same or it's not going to be a good controlled experiment. So the independent variable here is going to be room temperature. The dependent variable is sweating. And we are going to measure it in these units. The constants. I needed to think of other things that could possibly affect sweating besides room temperature. It could be hydration level, activity level, age, gender, body mass index, and these are going to come up when we start describing our procedure. 
So as we describe our procedure, we're going to start out by describing the experimental groups. Along with that, it's basically we start out step one, step two, step three, however many steps it takes to just explain the setup. How are you going to set up your experiment? How are you going to vary your independent variable? What conditions will be controlled? And what is the length or duration of the experiment? A lot of times as we describe this, it makes sense to throw in how we're going to measure and record as well. But I kept these three steps specific to just the setup. So as I describe the setup, I'm describing all of the things that are the same. The same age, the same BMI, the same hydration level as best as we can, the same amount of clothing. And then as we go through here, describing the activity level, which will also be the same from day to day, what's going to be the same. But then here we start at 80 degrees and each successive day we get 10 degrees warmer. And that's how we're varying the independent variable. And therefore that explains our experimental groups. We also in our procedure should describe a control group if possible. And again, this is going to be a standard treatment. It's something if we can, we want to remove the independent variable. But in this case, we don't remove temperature. So we're just doing a standard room temperature of 70 degrees to use as a baseline to compare the experimental groups to it. When we measure and record data, we want to be specific about the tool used and the units that it's going to be measured in. You can set up a table for observations as well, especially if it's a qualitative um, type of measurement. But I came up with, I did a little research and found that you can measure sweating with this tool right here. And we had measured in these units. Now, for this part, it's a little bit tricky um, because we aren't doing the experiment yet. We're simply describing the procedure for how to do it. But I want you to think ahead a little bit. Once the data is collected, what do you plan to do with it? Are you going to do a sum of the data? Are you going to find the total? Are you going to find the average? And that's a lot of the analysis part. What are you going to compare? How are you going to work with the data? But then also make a little bit of an idea about how you're going to present it. What type of graph would be a way to clearly um, make a conclusion based off of the data that's been collected? At the very end, um, we think about how we could verify the results. Validity is about consistency. So if we just do something once and it's just a fluke, we can't say very with much certainty or much confidence that the results are actually true. But if we do more trials or slightly modify, we can see if the procedure actually holds up under different conditions or if the relationship holds up. So again, if we put it all together, we list five things and then we write our step-by-step -step procedure. There is no perfect number of steps that your procedure should have, but I'm looking for a description of the setup, including experimental groups and all the things that should be kept the same. I want to hear about what you're planning to do for a control group. I want to hear about how you plan to measure and record your data, what you plan to do with the data afterwards, and then how are you going to verify the results to gain confidence in a conclusion? So again, five things to list, five things to include in your procedure. Question, hypothesis, independent variable, dependent variable, and constants. List those things. As you write out your procedure, make sure you describe the experimental setup, the control group, how to measure and record your data, your plan for analysis and presentation of that data, and how would you verify the results? Again, these are those five to list and five things I'm looking for in the procedure.